Welcome back to the Pentest Workshop. In this video, we'll do a quick run through of the Celestial Machine from Hack the Box. We'll exploit a serialization vulnerability from Node's Express framework. That'll get us a remote shell. Then we'll use the Pentest Workshop's Echo Up utility to help us create a remote file that's being run by root as a cron job. Let's get started. Here we are at the Hack the Box retired engagement. We're going to add a new host. The IP address is 10101085 for Celestial. The type is a server. The operating system is Linux. Add host. And now we need some ports. So we're going to scan an import. We're going to run the TCP top 1000 scan. Copy this to our clipboard. and switch over to our terminal. Simply paste in the scan command and we're going to go ahead and let this finish. And it looks like we found one port open, port 3000. Switch back to our pen test workshop, open up that file, tcp.xml, import. and we see this is a Node.js Express application. If we click on this port, we can use the browser shortcut, open this up in our web browser, and we see we get a 404. Take a look at the page source, Control U, it's H1 tag with 404. All right, we'll just refresh this page, and now we get something different. Hey dummy, two plus two equals 22, or is 22. So there's some sort of session tracking going on because it's a different page than the first time. We refresh it again just as a test. So let's send this over to Burp and see if we can figure out what's going on. All right, now we refresh it again. Jump into Burp. And we can see our request here. Uh, we've got a cookie with this profile string uh, that's what's doing the session tracking. So let's copy this. This looks like it's a base64 string. Copy that. We're going to send this whole thing over to our repeater tab so that we can edit this in a moment. Uh, let's go ahead and give this a go. 304 not modified. It's using this if none match HTTP header to do some caching, clear that out so that we get the actual page. Hey dummy, two plus two is 22. And if we go back to the pen test workshop, we can use the CyberChef tool to start messing around with this base64 string. And we'll paste that string into the input. We'll use the from base64 filter to decode that. Uh, it doesn't like this equals equals on the end so we'll just clear that out and we can see it decodes to a JSON object username dummy we saw that earlier number two we saw that earlier let's see if we can change these values so we'll swap the input and the output and we'll add the to base64 filter and we need to turn off the from base64 Great, that gives us our base64 encoded string, and we can change this value. And let's just put ptws, make sure that this is all encoded. And we'll copy this, jump back into burp, and replace this cookie and see if we can't start controlling what appears here. Excellent, now we see ptws in our output. Let's just, for giggles, change this to to five. Make sure this is fully baked. Paste this in. See if we can't get a five to appear. We do. Looks like we've got control over the variables. And the Express app is deserializing this into variables that it's using in its application. And with deserialization, there's lots of vulnerabilities in PHP. And if we search for node express 
deserialization exploit. The first result is this article. We need to turn off our burp, which you should go through and read this whole article to see what's going on behind the scenes. Basically, it's taking user defined user controlled data and processing it, which is always dangerous. The exploit exists in this function call, which causes this to execute. We're doing the eval, and this encoded string is a reverse shell, which is generated through this node.js shell.py script. This script will take an L host and an L port. So we're going to copy this raw file and jump into our terminal. And we'll do a quick wget for the Python script. And when we run this, it's going to ask for our L host and our L port, which if we take a look, our IP address is 10.10. .10 14.5. So we'll give it 14.5. We're going to use port 4545 just because I like to use that port. And here's our eval string that'll give us our remote shell. So we need a netcat listener on 4545. We're going to copy this string and it's not quite ready to use yet, but we can get it started. Using Cyberchef again, we'll just clear this out, paste in that big long eval string, and we need to touch this up a little bit according to the instructions in the article. We'll turn this into a JSON object by adding these bits here to the beginning of the string. That starts the JSON object. And now we need to close it out. Curly bracket, parentheses, quote, curly bracket. Great. And now here's our base64 encoded string that will give us a reverse shell if we paste it into our cookie and send that over to the server. There we go. See who we are. We're the Sun user. And we're going to upgrade this shell with the Python import PTY, which we've got a shortcut under shell upgrades. We're going to first try the Python 2. If that doesn't exist, we'll come down and we'll try the Python 3. But we've got Python, and now we've got a good looking shell. So first of all, let's figure out where we are. We're in the home sun directory. Let's take a look at what's here. Um, no user.txt, but everything looks to be from September. Here's August, August 25th. Output.txt, which was created about a minute ago. script is running so my guess is there's a cron job sitting behind this file that's running every minute every five minutes uh, looks like it's being run by root so if we switch into the documents directory if I can type and take a look in here. Here's our user.txt flag and a script.py which is printing script is running that's getting dumped into the output.txt every five minutes let's say and we have write ability for that file so we can overwrite this file. The cron job will come by run our script and if we put a reverse shell in there we should get another reverse shell, hopefully as root, because that seems to be the user who's running this. So we're going to create another netcat listener on 4646. 
we need a Python reverse shell, which is available here. We've got our IP address put in. We've put in our port number 4646. So let's copy this command for our Python reverse shell. Switch over to the echo up tool now. And the file name that we're going to be creating is script.py. We can paste in the reverse shell. And we don't need the Python command. It's already there. We don't need that trailing quote. Let's put in some extra lines so it's a little bit easier to read. That looks good. And what you can see that this tool is doing is it's first echoing the first line to redirect the output to script.py. That'll create the file or overwrite the file if it already exists. The following lines will append the content to the file. And line by line, these commands will build up this file on our remote server. One of the options that we have is to change our quote style. If we were attacking a Windows machine, Windows will sometimes echo these quotes themselves, whereas Linux does not. So we can change this to double quote if we need to, or none at all, just depending on the environment that we're in. And if you notice, we change this to double quote. We have double quotes in our data. So the echo up tool replaces those with an escape sequence that will regenerate this single quote when we do the echo command. We don't need to do that now. We're just going to use single quotes, which the double quote changes back to just a double quote. So what that means is we don't need to worry about escaping quotes in our content. The tool will do that for us. So let's see this in action. We'll go ahead and copy these echo commands. Go to our terminal. And let's move the script.py to script.py.og. And when we paste in those echo commands, that file will get generated. with the contents of our Python reverse shell. So now when the cron job comes by, it will run our new script.py and send us another reverse shell on port 4646. And there we go. We get another reverse shell. We've got a pound sign. That's always nice to see. If we check our ID, we are indeed root. We're in the root directory. There's our root.txt flag, and this box is done. Switch over to our pen test workshop, open up the host, check this off as being rooted, and we're done. So, to recap on the Celestial box, we exploited a deserialization vulnerability in the Express framework to get a remote shell, and we used the echo up tool to help us generate a script.py file, which sent us a root reverse shell. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to create your free account at pentest.ws. Thanks for watching.